Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, uh, and it's just me today, mainly because there's just no room for anyone else. Sometimes I have my wife on, but there's just the, there's no room. There's just so much beer here to taste uh, that I think I'm just going to have to do this one solo. A lot of beers here, all of the same style. These are all Dortmunder lagers or Dortmunder export lagers or export lagers, sometimes they're called. Um, interesting, interesting style that you don't really hear about, but as you can see, they are fairly well represented out in the marketplace if you look hard enough. Uh, there's even more Dortmunders than this, and I didn't really have to look too hard to, to gather these beers here. A little history on Dortmunder. It, it, Dortmunders are from the town of Dortmund. I've talked in the past about how a lot of these German styles like to add the ER to the end of the, the name of the town to drive the, the beer name. So you have, um, you know, Berliner Weiss, Dortmunders, um, you know, stuff like that. So this is a lager uh, and it came about from the town of Dortmund, like I said, right around the time that a lot of the lagers were kind of sweeping across Germany and eventually across the rest of the country. It, it, behind the original light lager, the Pilsner, which we've talked about in previous shows. And really, the way that it kind of grew, it grew out of Pilsen, out of, or Pilsener, there's another ER, uh, it grew out of the town of Pilsen in uh, the Czech, what is now the Czech Republic. And everyone wanted to try to copy or do their own version of this light lager because people just were going for it and they were losing money, really, is what it came down to. They were losing money to these light lagers. So what happened is, depending on the region, and a lot of it depended on you know the local water and just the local ingredients that they had access to, these light lagers had slight nuances to them. So obviously they had the classic Pilsner, the Bohemian Pilsner in um, Czechoslovakia where it started. And up north in northern Germany, you got these German style pills, these even more bright, uh, bitter Pilsner, Pilsners, often called pills up to the north. And then further down south in Munich, you had these Munich style Hellas beers, which were, which were much lighter, much less bitter, more malt driven. And oddly enough, you know, kind of right in the middle of those guys is the town of Dortmund. And as you could guess, I guess it's kind of in between all of them, really. And it is kind of a combination of all those styles of beer. What a lot of people say about Dortmunders is it's all about balance. If Pils is about the hop and Hellas is about the malt, Dortmunder is about balance. So you're getting balance of everything. The aromatic and flavor of the hops, also the bittering element of the hops, as well as the bready character of the malt. Everything should be harmonized very, very well in a Dortmunder. They should all be in equal proportion on the palate, and you should be able to taste all the ingredients. Nothing should be overpowering anything else. So not necessarily a hard or I'm sorry, an easy beer to brew. I mean, you've got to get everything right. And like with all these light lagers, there's no room to hide. Any sort of brew house infection or mistake is going to come through in the finished product because there isn't a whole bunch of hops to hide behind. There isn't a lot of roasted malt to hide behind like some of these huge imperial stouts or other styles of beer. So that's a little bit, that's kind of the, the quick history on the Dortmunder. And now I really just want to get into it since we have so much. Got a wide variety of Dortmunders here. It's, it's really cool, including one from the town of Dortmund. I had to include that. So the first one is a beer I've never had before. It's the uh, Calnapolis or Canapillus Grand Beer from Lithuania. Believe it or not, uh, a Lithuanian beer. A lot of these Eastern European, whoops, lagers, uh, beers are these light lagers. They're still very much in that tradition. And they make several beers, but the Grand is their Dortmund, uh, their Dortmunder uh, beer. And from what I could find out, which was mainly on the packaging and on the web uh, site from Calnapolis, you know, they've entered in a contest and have won medals. I don't know if I'd heard of uh, too many of the contests that they'd entered, but 
hey, maybe it was just a homebrew competition. So let's take a look at the, I'm gonna say Calnapolis. And if there's someone out there who knows, if there's one thing you guys like to do, it's correct me on pronunciation. So this is your invitation. Uh, tell me how to pronounce Calnapolis. So let's take a look. Really uh, light colored beer here, crystal clear as it should be. A little bit of a golden touch to it. Not quite a straw color, a little bit darker than that, but certainly towards the lighter end of a beer that you're gonna get. Um, certainly of an all malt built beer. If you start getting into light lagers and stuff like that, you know, all bets are off. But attractive looking, a little bit of a nice white head to it. So let's uh, see. As far as freshness dating, I'm gonna try to give you this from now on, like I mentioned before in, in previous shows, and I'll try to do it here as well. You know, with this beer, the only freshness date or code of any kind I could find was 01. So hopefully this beer was not brewed in commemoration of uh, Christ's first birthday. Uh, other than that, I have no idea when this beer was brewed. It w was new to the store that I got it in, so that's all I can hope for. Uh, really kind of hard with some of these beers. All right. Well, really pretty pleasant bready flavor to it. Uh, bready aroma, I should say. Uh, not quite, it, it's not honeyed really. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily want that with this lager, but it's starting to verge towards that. A little bit of um, biscuity, bready flavor. Not any real fruit and not really any hop aromatics as well. Okay, so some of that honeyed flavor that I smelled and well, was kind of trying to stray away from because I was afraid that it might be <laughs> what I thought it was, it was in fact oxidation. This beer is a little oxidized. I'm getting a little bit of a papery taste to it and a little bit of that honeyed flavor. A lot of times that malt, that nice bready malt flavor can turn into a more honeyed component. Uh, if it sits around too long, it's a problem. You know, how long has this beer been sitting at the distributor? It hadn't been sitting in the store for very long, but that doesn't mean that the distributor hadn't been got getting there shipment, uh, you know, months and months and maybe even a year ago and who knows how long it was sitting at a port and anyway, uh, it's a shame. Uh, it's a decent beer. I'm trying to dig underneath it and see what I, what, what I can get. Very little bitterness as well. What if it had been there to begin, it's certainly faded by now. No hop flavor or aromatics, just a pretty light malt bill that is starting to get a little bit oxidized as well. As it is, I'm going to have to go pretty low on this beer. It's pretty bland. Not a lot going on here. I'm going to go 82 for this beer. Uh, you know what? I, I can't even go that high. Uh, I'm going to go... I'm torn. I'll go 81. I'll go 81. N not a lot to say about the beer. Uh, it's a shame. I would really like to try one a little bit fresher. But again, with no bottle dating, anything like that, it's always a crapshoot, especially with a beer that probably doesn't get moved around in the market as much as uh, some others. So on to the next beer. I'm gonna give myself a tiny little rinse. I don't wanna get any of those components from the last beer on this beer. Okay, so our friends Eyinger are back. You know, uh, whenever we have a German show, more likely than not, I'm gonna have these guys on. So at least that, speaks to what I feel about them as a brewery. Really, really great brewery out of Eying, Germany. Uh, the Eyinger, they do a whole variety of classic German styles. Wheat, or uh, ale, or lager. This is their Jahrhundert, and it is their Dortmunder style beer. Also, no bottle dating that I can see on this bottle. Nothing that I could detect. I will say this beer moves a lot faster. So if you go to a high volume store or a store that you know is gonna look out for you and not put old product on the shelf, you're gonna be fairly safe with the Eyinger beers. Much, much lighter 
than even the Grand. This is straight up straw colored. Just a hint of uh, kind of a golden aspect to it, but really quite light. Uh, pretty clear as well. I might have just a bit of haze in there. I'm trying to see if that's my glass or not, but overall uh, fairly clear with a nice pure white head. All right, well, off to a good start. I actually get some hop aromatics here, which is nice. It's a nice floral um, hop note with a little bit of kind of nice green herbs as well. I'm thinking uh, like sage or oregano, like kind of a little bit of like a more dried herb with a nice floral or green note to it. Nothing overpowering and certainly not overpowering the malt, which is also there. So right from the get-go, this is what you want to see in a Dortmunder. You want the hops and you want the malt. Really pleasant. I really like that slightly floral aroma, how it plays with the, um, with the malt. Mm. And almost like a little bit of like, like a minty component to it. And I mean just subtle. I don't mean this is a minty smelling beer but it's got a, like an edge to it and it's nice. Man. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing I'll say is this beer goes down easy. Uh, a lot of times beers go down easy when they're ice cold and you can just kind of knock them back. I have not done this with this beer. I have These beers are, are a little bit warmer than you would normally serve them because I don't want anything to be hidden by the flavor, uh, by, the, by the temperature. When things are too cold, they numb your tongue and you can't taste stuff. So these are a little bit chilled because I want to get that refreshing experience that you should from a lighter lager, but I want to be able to taste everything. And this beer really goes down easy. It's not the most complex beer in the world. There's the malt there. There's just a hint of bitterness, really not a lot. And you do get a little bit of that aromatic hop flavor as well. They're all very restrained. If you're used to tasting American craft beers and IPAs and pale ales, we're not at that level. We are talking about drinkable, sessionable beers. We're putting several of these bottles down in a night is not going to leave you, you know, stumbling around on the floor. This is a beer to be drunk uh, in gulps and with food. And this is, is pretty good. All these beers are going to come in probably around 5% alcohol, something like that. So I'm just trying to see if I can see the, uh, the alcohol here. Really nice beer here. Uh, I like it quite a bit. Um, you know, if, if I had a steady stream of Jahrhundert around, I, I would certainly drink it. These beers can tend to be a little bit pricey. They're about four bucks, I think, per bottle. So not cheap and really not ideal for this kind of beer. Um, you know, at that price, for two of them, you can get a, a six pack of the next beer I'm gonna talk about. So uh, I'm not gonna take that into account when, when I rate it, but it is something you probably wanna know. Where am I gonna go with this beer? Much higher than this. I'm gonna go around uh, 90 for this beer. It really gives me what I want, which is a nice drinkable beer. It's not hitting me over the head with anything mind blowing but I really like it, it's a solid beer. 90 might be a little bit low. Now I'm second guessing myself all the time. What did I, I have knocked down this one. I'll go 81, 91. This is at least 10 points higher than that, at least. All right, now to the first American and the most well-known Dortmunder in America, the Great Lakes Dortmunder Gold. Great Lakes Brewing out of Cleveland, Ohio. We've had them on the show before. And I'd say this is one of their flagship beers. They say they have a, they have a fleet, they don't have a flagship. But I'd say this is probably, if I had to guess, their best-selling beer. I don't know that. 
Uh, and it's really cool that, you know, what may be your best-selling beer is a Dortmunder Lager. It's called Dortmunder Gold because I think it won a whole bunch of awards, like the Count Napolis. <laughs> and, but I've actually heard of of these awards, you know, the Great American Beer Fest, I've I've heard of 5.8% alcohol, so right around where we're looking for it to be. Uh, and it says not as dry as a Pilsner or malty as a Munich style lager, which would be a Helles. So, Golden Lager, named after the German city of Dortmund. Let's take a look. This beer is quite fresh. Uh, it is has a best before date of a little over three months out and kind of going to freshbeeronly.com. Uh, I figured out that it's just about four weeks old. Very fresh for this style of beer. And it's amazing how all three of these beers have been so different in appearance. Very bright, but much more copper than the other ones. I mean, if you can just see I mean, it's 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 really like an amber copper colored, but really brilliant and uh, nice looking beer. The white head is there as well. All right, so it's <laughs> I'm getting uh, again a nice hop or aromatic. It's an interesting profile that I'm getting here. It's weird. I'm almost getting like a peanutty flavor here, which is not what I was expecting, like a caramely peanutty, very dry, uh, in, in, in an austere way. It's not like a fruity ale or anything like that. But yeah, that peanutty flavor is kind of weird. All right, this is what I'm talking about. I am getting a little bit of that dusty, nutty flavor to it, but I like it. A good amount of bitterness. This is the first beer where I actually had some bitterness as well as hop flavor and malt, so I'm getting everything I want. Remember, it's not just about the hop aromatics. I want some bite on this beer as well. Still very drinkable, and it's got, like I said, all that I could ask for. A little bit heavier in the mouth than either of the previous two beers. Just a bit more substantial, and I think it'll stand up to a little bit um, heavier foods. Um, still quite versatile. It's nice. It's kind of nice spicy hops as well. I got that same herbal note, not the floral side of the Yar 100, but more of that kind of herbal dried herbs. And, and a nice kind of spiciness, not quite to peppery. Um, but it's good. A good malt, solid malt backing, and my mouth is left with a nice kind of slow burn of bitterness in the back end, which is what I want. Very good beer. I gotta go higher than higher than the R100 by a little bit. I'm gonna go 94 with the uh, Dortmunder Gold. In terms of a Dortmunder, I mean, that's pretty much doing whatever, all that I'm asking for, more than the R100. In fact, now I'm thinking maybe I went too high with the R100. Look at me, second guessing myself all the time. All right, so this next beer is also from America. It is from the uh, uh, Spätzl Brewing, I think it is pronounced. You can, again, correct me. Uh, makers of, the f of their famous Shiner Bach. They are an American lager brewery, as you can uh, see from the, uh, their latest seasonal offering, which is a Dortmunder-style beer. One weird thing about this is they're calling it their spring ale. Dortmunders are lagers. They're not ales. Um, the difference being the type of yeast that is used. But uh, I'm just going to say that it's a Dortmunder. There's no such thing as a Dortmunder ale. So I'm just going to go with it. Also a very fresh beer. This beer is about five weeks old, just over a month. And that is plenty fresh for this style of beer. I'll set it back here. Okay. So. All right, we're looking uh, pretty close to that Dortmunder gold uh, color. Yeah, much more of like a, a golden color to it. Not quite as copper as the Dortmunder. And always that nice little white head on top. Mm. 
Okay, so, not a bad smelling beer. I'm getting a nice malt character to it. Very clean, maybe a, a, just a hint of, uh, of fruit in there, but very, very slight, maybe a bit of like orange character, but meh, just a hint. I'm also getting a little bit, I think that orange might be coming from the hops actually. And nice kind of orangey or floral hop, very subdued, but nice. Hmm. Interesting. Um, much sweeter than any of the other beers. There shouldn't be a whole lot of residual sugars left in this beer, but in this one, there certainly is. It's not as dry as, as any of the other beers. It's also not uh, bitter either. Uh, the bitterness is similar to the R100, but it does have that uh, sweetness in there as well. A little bit of maltiness. I do get some of that hop aromatics in my mouth, which I do like, um, but little in the way of bitterness, decent beer, drinkable beer, although I do think that that hint of malt sweetness will um, kind of creep up on you if you're having a bunch of them. You know, it's going to start to get like, uh, I kind of want something lighter or, or different at least if I'm, if I'm going to be drinking something with a little bit of sweetness. I want something else going on in here. Um, it's funny, it does have a little bit of maybe ale-like qualities to it, although it's certainly a lager. Well, let's see what they have to say about it. Old world classic. Smooth flavor, mild hop bitterness. Hints of grain and honey. Yeah, I'm getting that honey and floral hops. Eh. Uh, medium hop bitterness. I'm not really getting much bitterness at all. Uh, I'm going to go below the R100. I'm going to go 88 with the uh, Shiner Dortmunder. It's uh, it's decent. It's worth trying. It might be a style for you if you kind of like a little bit more going on in your in your lagers, but um, certainly not the best offering out there as far as I'm concerned. All right, to the final beer of ours, the DAB, which stands for Dortmunder Octian Brewery. So a Dortmunder from Dortmund. I believe this is the um, largest brewery who's producing Dortmunders in Dortmund. Uh, there's actually a lot of breweries in Dortmund, apparently. They just don't really do a lot of the style anymore. Uh, this is a beer that you can get pretty much all over the country. Uh, it's pretty cheap as well. Uh, you're looking at like, you know, Bud Light prices for this beer. Again, I really don't see much in the way. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's like some really weird cryptic bottling code on there. I had no idea and couldn't find any information on the freshness. This is a beer that will be drunk in a good, uh, yeah. people should be not be sitting on this beer in their stores. If they're carrying this beer, you're hoping that they're going through it. So hopefully it won't be stale, but we shall see. All right, let's take a look at it. Okay. It is a light beer. It is much closer in color to the R100. I don't know, maybe the Germans are telling us something. Maybe they're saying uh, us Americans, uh, you know, our, our Dortmunders are too, are too dark. Very clear, crystal clear, and again, the nice, just barely perceptible uh, film of foam. Not a bad smell. Hold on. All right, so I'm getting some good grain flavor to it. It's not that breadiness. It's it's a bit more grainy, almost like uh, you know, like like a husked grain. But it's not harsh. It's pretty mild. There is some underlying malt sweetness to it as as well. Uh, my guess is maybe it's got some, you know, six row malt, which tends to be a little bit more grainy in there. Who knows? Uh, and I also, I'm picking up some like interesting, like very faint, uh, like uh, cocoa powder. 
think I might be crazy though. We'll see. I mean, that's what I'm getting right now. Like an underlying kind of just like a bit of like that deep sweetness to it. Kind of interesting. I'm not getting a lot in the way of herbaceousness or anything. That might be the hops that, that, that I'm picking up on. Very, very odd. All right, uh, grainy cardboard. This is an oxidized beer. Uh, who knows how it happened? Maybe it's just old. Maybe it was sitting here cooking in the sun in its can on a sh you know shipping container or container ship uh, coming on over. It is a shame. Uh, oxidized beers have like a papery quality to them, a little bit of a musty quality to them. You saw in the first one they can get a honeyed component to it. I'm not getting it here. It's not that oxidized. Uh, the underlying grain is still perceptible. It's decent. I am still, um, I, I'm not getting, no, it's, it's, it's not bitterness. It's more of, um, like a dry kind of like wicking flavor in my mouth where the, the uh, it's getting sucked up. Um, uh, forgetting the term for, for that right now, but you know, almost like a drying quality to it, almost like as if it was tannic, uh, which you can also get from those six, rank, six row uh, barleys. They tend to have more tannins and they can leach into it. And I think that might be what I'm getting here. I uh, can't say I really like this beer. I uh, can't say of all these beers, I'm really gonna finish this one or this one. Uh, I'm gonna put these guys, uh, you know, somewhat further below. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go 84 for the DAB. Not really what um, I was hoping to get out of it. Who knows if these beers are fresh, it might be a whole nother story, but I can't really talk to that here. Uh, overall, I think it's pretty clear in my mind the order that they go in. And I think in the case of your 100, freshness might have something to do with it. Who knows? But the Dortmunder Gold, I think, is clearly the number one for me, followed by the 100. And then in third, taking up uh, the bronze, is the uh, Shiner Dortmunder. So there you have it, guys. Uh, sorry about the uh, unkempt appearance, but I have learned that uh, it's taken 35 years, almost 35 years, but I am to a point where I really need to shave every day. This is kind of one day without shaving and it kind of sucks because I hate shaving. So as I said uh, many times before, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for the reviews and all the comments. I love to hear what you guys think about the shows. Some really awesome reviews on iTunes lately and I will give you guys shout outs. I'm really bad about that, especially when you guys are great about giving the reviews but uh, that's about it we're going to be coming up with our next show uh, margaret will be back so for all you guys who uh, and gals who like to see the both of us uh, you're in luck but until next time i've got a lot of beer to drink and hopefully you do too